Why is it, he said at the subway entrance, that some people change the world while others don't? I think anyone can change the world, she said. So then what does one need to be able to change the world? Special tools, he asked. They paused for a moment. Then she said, No, all you need is courage. That's what makes everyday objects and actions special. It is through courage that a simple sign can start a worldwide movement. That a shovel can stop the desert. A laptop can expose the truth. Peaceful protest can keep hope alive. Poetry can rid the streets of violence and providing medical care can begin to heal the wounds of war. So courage is a superpower, he said. Yes, a superpower that we all have, but only few decide to use, she said. It is courage that binds all Right Livelihood Laureates together. Courage to believe in a vision when no one else does. Courage to fight injustice even in the face of danger. Courage to act when others look away. Courage to believe in justice, peace and sustainability for all. We, the Right Livelihood Foundation, are here to nurture and honour courage. Welcome to the presentation of the Right Livelihood Award 2020 live from Stockholm, Sweden. My name is Gina Duravi and I will be your host this evening, guiding you through a night where we celebrate courageous people from all around the planet who have dedicated their lives to the bringing about peace, justice and sustainability for all. Tonight is all about our four amazing laureates uh, who are now amongst the 182 recipients of the award hailing from 72 countries. Obviously, due to the pandemic, this evening is going to be a little bit different than previous years. As you can see, there's no audience tonight. You might hear some applause or someone clapping. No worries, there's no ghosts or ghouls. It's just the crew who are very excited about this evening. Um, not all of the presenters or laureates are with us here in Stockholm, but we do have them live from across the planet. And all of us are dying to know what you guys think and feel. Please join the conversation on hashtag right livelihood. We want to know your thoughts about this evening. It's going to be really emotional. Um, but also filled with hope and courage. I think that is something that all of us really need and crave tonight, especially during these pretty miserable times. Uh, we're going to start the presentation. Uh, before you guys meet the first laureate, it's time for the mamas with their song, Move. Fall, it's all right. That's life. Oh, life. We wipe those eyes and then we rise. That's life. Oh, life. Even when the leaf is falling, even when you're at the bottom, I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. There ain't no ocean deeper than my love for you, and there ain't no fire that I want to run right through. There ain't no mountain, maybe that I wouldn't move. Nothing that I wouldn't do for you, cause you do it for me too.
Thank you so much, The Mamas Move. We'll see you guys later this evening. So since the founding of the Right Livelihood Award 41 years ago, it has really empowered some of the most visionary change makers on our planet and allowed people just like you and me to learn about their work and how we can build a sustainable future together. This year, we have asked world-renowned artist Eva Hill to design the award. It is made out of Humania metal, and we have made a film about it. Cuando a mí me dispararon, yo solo sentí una llama caliente. Yo no sentí allí y me toqué y miraba que allí tenía sangre. Thank you, Eva Hilt, for those amazing uh, sculptures. It's time for, for the moment that we've all been waiting for. We're going to introduce our first laureate. But before we do that, I just want to tell you once again, due to the pandemic, not all of the presenters or laureates were able to be here this evening, but we do have them with us live across the globe. Our first presenter was wrongly convicted and sentenced to death. After 30 years in custody and 16 years of tireless work from Mr. Brian Stevenson and the Equal Justice Initiative, Mr. Anthony Ray Hinton was exonerated and freed, making him one of the longest lasting or serving death row prisoners in Alabama history. 
Today, Mr. Hinton is a powerful advocate for abolition of death penalty, and tonight he is with us live from Montgomery, Alabama. Good evening. My name is Anthony Ray Hinton, and I spent 30 years on Alabama death row for a crime that I did not commit. Had it not been for Brian Stevenson and the Equal Justice Initiative, I would not be able to be here today. 30 years is a long time to stand on somewhere for a crime that you didn't commit. Brian Stevenson worked diligently to get me off, and I am here today. Let's watch the film. Brian Stevenson is a leading US civil rights lawyer striving to reform the criminal justice system. Stevenson's work is rooted in the realization that society and the justice system are plagued by systemic racism due to the unresolved history of slavery and white supremacy in the US. The US has the highest rate of incarceration in the world disproportionately affecting people of color and the poor. As a result of racial prejudice, people of color are often stripped of their right to a fair trial and face harsher sentences when found guilty. Defending the marginalized and the condemned, Stevenson has argued and won several cases before the US Supreme Court. He is the founder and executive director of the Equal Justice Initiative. To date, he and his organization have won release, relief or reversal for over 140 wrongfully condemned individuals on death row. Stevenson and his team are also deeply engaged in documenting the history of slavery, lynchings and segregation in the U.S. Stevenson is advocating for a society-wide process to face the legacy of slavery and white supremacy in the U.S. With compassion and moral clarity, he is paving the way for societal healing from the country's long and violent history of racial injustice. Today, Brian Stevenson spent over 30 years fighting for the end of death penalty. Brian Stevenson have fought for 30 years to be a voice for those that don't have a voice. Brian Stevenson have fought for 30 years to fight for those that couldn't fight. Today, it is my honor to present Mr. Brian Stevenson with the Right Livelihood Award. Thank you. This is such an extraordinary honor and a great privilege. I am thrilled uh, to be part of a new fellowship, a new community of award winners. I want to congratulate my new friends, my compatriots in Belarus, in Iran, in Nicaragua. It's a great honor to be with you. It's a double honor for me to receive this award from my friend, my brother, uh, a man I had the privilege of representing uh, while he was facing execution for 30 years, Anthony Ray Hinton, I work in a country that has the highest rate of incarceration in the world. I work against a system that treats you better if you're rich and guilty than if you're poor and innocent. We work to overturn this horrific era of mass incarceration in America that has been brought about by the politics of fear and anger and in too many places across the world. We're being governed by people who preach fear and anger, and fear and anger are the essential ingredients of oppression and abuse. And we need a community of people to stand up against it. That's what human rights work is about for me. It's about challenging these conditions that have been so brutal, so toxic, so critically unfair. There are thousands of innocent people in our jails and prisons, and we're going to continue fighting for them. I am the descendant of one of the 12 million Africans who were abducted kidnapped, trafficked to this continent 400 years ago. My great-grandparents were enslaved. They had to deal with the bondage and horrors of slavery in this nation. And yet they persevered. They had a hope. They had a belief. They had a commitment to freedom and equality. I'm standing in front of jars. And behind me, these jars represent the thousands of Black people who were lynched in America. These were collected at sites across America for a century 
African Americans were brutalized, pulled out of their homes, beaten, bloodied, drowned, torched, lynched, in a nation where lawlessness reigned. I am the child of people born into Jim Crow. My parents were humiliated and denigrated by those signs that said white and colored. And they weren't directions, they were assaults. They created injuries. And our nation has not confronted those injuries. I began my education in a colored school. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here today if lawyers hadn't come into our community and made it possible for me to go to high school and college and law school. And Mr. Hinton and I still live in a nation where there is a presumption of dangerousness and guilt that burdens black and brown people. We've been in the streets this summer trying to confront this legacy of racial inequality that continues to contaminate our nation. We are not yet free. We have not dealt with this horrific narrative. My great-grandparents were enslaved. They had to deal with brutality and bondage. But the greatest victimization they suffered was this narrative that was created during slavery that black people aren't as good as white people, that black people are less human, black people are less evolved, black people are less deserving, black people are less capable. That narrative is the narrative that we are fighting against. I am in Montgomery, Alabama. It's a community where a generation ago, people put on their Sunday best to protest, to fight for equality and justice. They knew they would get bloodied and battered and beaten, but they went anyway. I stand on the shoulders of people who did so much more with so much less. And because of them, I am determined that we must keep fighting. Because of them, I believe that we must stand up even when people say sit down. We must speak even when people say be quiet. Wherever human rights are being violated, wherever injustice can be found, wherever inequality can be seen, there have to be a community of people who fight. And I am honored to be among that community and to receive this recognition today for that fight. Thank you so very much for doing what you've done for me. But more than that, for all of the people around the world suffering from inequality and injustice, thank you for recognizing the importance of our struggle. Thank you, Mr. Brian Stevenson, for that important and uh, moving message. Uh, thank you so much for your service. Uh, we're going to continue this evening. The Right uh, Livelihood Award received a lot of attention when it was first presented in 1980. And since then, it's one of the most prestigious awards when it comes to human rights, social justice, and peace. Because of its history, it's often refers to, uh, referred to as the alternative Nobel Prize, but there are many differences. The Right Livelihood Award does not only come with a cash prize of one million crowners, it also comes with a long-term support. Whether it is networking or protection for laureates under threat, from now on, the Right Livelihood Foundation will stand on the sidelines watching our laureates fight for a better world. We're going to continue with some amazing music. Please welcome Amanda Berryman with The Hard Rain's Gonna Fall. Stumbled on the side of twelve misty mountains I walked and I crawled on six crooked highways I've stepped in the middle of seven sad forests I've been out in front of a dozen dead oceans I've been 10,000 miles from the mouth of a graveyard And it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard, it's a hard rain that's gonna fall
Thank you, Amanda Berryman. 2020 has been a year that I don't think any of us will ever forget. The COVID-19 pandemic brought us great fear, grief, isolation, and forced us to reconsider our most basic assumption about life. And this pandemic came on top of already very pressing issues around the planet, a climate crisis, economic injustice, ruptures in the social fabric, and blatant disregards of human rights. Um, it's very easy to get discouraged and heartbroken seeing the state of the world right now, and that's why it's so important to look at this year's laureates, but also those from the past. They are all united in their courage in their hope and willingness to transform broken systems. Whether it is the legacy of slavery in a flawed criminal justice system in the US, the blatant disregard of human rights in Iran, the plunder and destruction of indigenous land in Nicaragua, or the stifling of democracy in Belarus, the 2020 laureates give us all hope that a brighter day is just around the corner. Our next presenter is the chairperson of Amnesty Sweden and also serves as a regional executive director on climate justice at the People's Vigilance Committee on Human Rights Asia. Please welcome Parul Sharma. <laughs> Dear friends, Dear Lottie, being a human rights lawyer, I felt immensely pleased and honored to introduce this other lawyer for the Right Livelihood Award 2020. The suffering of her people, the Mosquito Indigenous Group in Nicaragua, the hunger, the humanitarian crisis, and the armed land grabbing is beyond injustice. But friends, Lotte teaches us much more than the importance of legal protection and legal strategies for indigenous communities. She is one of the most powerful carriers of indigenous culture, a guardian of her people's livelihood, a guardian of forests, a guardian of rivers, lands, and the Earth's climate system. She is a caretaker and practitioner of indigenous knowledge and life. Her fight is our strength. Her life's mission for justice for indigenous com communities in Nicaragua gives us hope for a continued, affluent flourishing of Mother Nature. She teaches us to give to the trees and they will give to us. We will now watch a short film about Lottie Cunningham Wren. Thank you. 
Lottie Cunningham Wren is an indigenous rights and environmental activist from the Mosquito Ethnic Group in Nicaragua. She has taken the plight of indigenous and Afro-descendant communities all the way to the Inter-American Court of Human Rights and won. Indigenous communities around the world, but especially in Latin America, face a multitude of threats. From land grabs and exploitation of their natural resources to violence, endangering their very existence. In Nicaragua, indigenous communities are harassed by armed settlers who use the land to ranch cattle and harvest wood. The environment is often destroyed because of the state's promotion of extractive industries. Indigenous groups are pushed out of their lands. Through the use of international and domestic law, Cunningham has secured indigenous land rights in Nicaragua, pioneering legal strategies that have been successfully used by indigenous communities around the world. She has also shown that the protection of indigenous land is instrumental to the protection of local ecosystems. Despite threats and intimidation, Lottie Cunningham remains unwavering in her commitment to empowering and protecting indigenous communities. It is thus with great pleasure I present the 2020 Right Livelihood Award to Lottie Cunningham Wren. Laikula Yavisna Wan Uplika Nanira. Good evening to all of you who are listening to this ceremony, and thank you so much, Ms. Paral Sarma. First, I would like to express my sincere gratulation to my fellow Rights Livelihood 2020. For me, it is privileged to share this moment with you. My team and I are honored by this recognition. I affirm to the world and to Nicaragua that I do not assume this prize in personal capacity, but on behalf of the indigenous people of Nicaragua, particularly those who have given their life defending Mother Earth and the indigenous and Afro-descendant women of the Caribbean coast of Nicaragua who fight day by day for their life and their territory. Likewise, I accept the award at a time when more than 270 indigenous Afro-descendant village and community in Nicaragua have been devastated by two hurricanes in less than 15 days, leaving dozens of indigenous people without food, clean water, house, and roof. I could not make it without those human rights defenders who are within the communities. To them, a special thanks. Also to my wonderful family who support me and to my many partners who have collaborated with us for all these years in achieving the dream of my people. As an indigenous woman with deep faith in God, I have raised this small voice for the indigenous and Afro-descendants people who have no voice to be able to share the testimony of indigenous women about their pain and their struggle. Indigenous and Afro-descendants people live in 304 village in 23 territory. 90% 
of ter our territory face a massive invasion of settler. Most of them armed land grabbers. These settlers cut down our forests, mining our minerals and ranch cattle on our lands. They are pushing my people in their farmland and out of their village where they used to carry our traditional activity like hunting, fishing, and collecting traditional medicinal plants. We are in a humanitarian crisis. Even though Nicaragua has one of the broadest law in terms of indigenous people rights, the states of Nicaragua has refused to implement concrete action to protect indigenous people, life, territory, and cultural identity. I have worked a long time with my people, with those who are hungry and thirsty for justice, who suffer the restriction and their mobility due to forced displacement, who suffer the violence, the destructions of the environment, or the violation of their basic rights. It is for them that I am here. However, I feel optimistic about the teaching of my grandmother who taught me many values and principles to live in harmony with mother nature. This motivates me to continue the struggle to achieve the dreams of my people so that one day social justice prelive, self-determination and the management of our own territory. Thank you all for believing and choosing us for this very important award. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lottie Cunningham Wren, for that emotional speech. Uh, it is so inspiring watching our laureates uh, speak. I think we're all very, very moved, and I hope you guys are too. Uh, we're going to continue this evening with some music. Please welcome Sara Klang with New Day Coming.
Thank you, Sara Klang. Our next presenter has been an outspoken champion for democracy and human rights. In her position, she worked to enforce uh, or increase global security and respect for democratic rights uh, around the planet. It's time to introduce Swedish Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ann Linde. But before that, we have some disturbing news. After being released on temporary medical leave a few weeks ago, we learned yesterday that Iranian authorities are ordering Ms. Sotude back to prison. Not only is she once again being taken away from her family, but her health continues to be in great danger. Uh, this uh, message that we're about to see from Foreign Min Swedish Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ann Linde, was recorded before the knowing of the imprisonment. But uh, as you can understand, it's more urgent than ever uh, due to current developments. Dear Nasrin, the Right Livelihood Foundation has chosen you for this award as an encouragement and as a token of a strong appreciation for your work and for your bravery, which gives strength to so many others following in your footsteps. We will now watch a short film about Nasrin Sotudeh. Nasreen Satuda is an Iranian lawyer advocating for the rule of law and respect for human rights. She is currently serving a long prison sentence for standing up against the country's draconian legal system. Under Iran's oppressive leadership, political opposition and human rights are heavily restricted. Women face especially harsh oppression due to the country's strict interpretation of Islamic law. Nazarene Satuda rose to prominence after the 2009 anti-government protests, the so-called Green Revolution, when she defended several activists arrested during the regime's aggressive crackdown on the demonstrations. Satuda has also represented Iranian Nobel Peace Prize laureate Shirin Abadi and women who protested Iran's draconian law requiring hijabs by taking off their headscarves on the streets. Because of her unrelenting commitment to justice, Satuda has been jailed several times. In 2019, she was sentenced to 148 lashes and a total of 38 years in prison. The made-up charges include stoking corruption and prostitution. Despite her imprisonment and constant threats to her family, Satuda remains a defiant advocate for the rule of law. In 2020, Satuda went on hunger strikes to protest the grave mistreatment of political prisoners. Nazrin Satuda's unrelenting fight against oppression has made her a symbol of the struggle for justice in Iran. Dear Mrs. Sutude, it is an honor to present to you this prestigious prize, independently awarded by the Right Livelihood Foundation in recognition of your fearless activism to promote human rights and fundamental freedoms in Iran at great personal risk. You are widely and rightly regarded as a symbol of courage. Your unwavering commitment to human rights, democracy and the rule of law is an inspiration for many in your own country, across the MENA region and across the globe. You have, in your trade as a lawyer, courageously defended others who have fought for human rights to be respected in your country, including the Nobel Peace Prize laureate Shirin Ebadi. Last but not least, you have been relentless in your advocacy for the full enjoyment of human rights by all women and girls. Sweden is the first country in the world to pursue a feminist foreign policy. This policy was launched in 2014 in response to the discrimination and systematic subordination that still mark the daily lives of countless women and girls around the world. One starting point is that while gender equality is an objective in itself, it is also essential for achieving other objectives, such as peace, security, and sustainable development. 
It should be in every government's interest to ensure that all the citizens can fulfill their potential, feel that their rights are protected and that their views are represented in parliament and its leadership positions. This is the best way of building strong, prosperous and resilient societies. Very powerful words from Swedish Minister of Foreign Affairs. And now we have a, a message from Nobel Peace Prize laureate Shirin Ebadi, who has been a colleague and a close friend to Ms. Sutude for many years. برای مصاحبه با من آمده بود بسیار مسلط و توانا بود بعد از مصاحبه ازش پرسیدم که چی کار میکنی؟ گفتش که دانشجو هم هستم و فوق لیسانس حقوق میخونم من اونو تشویق کردم که توانه وکالت بگیره و در حرفه خودش که تحصیل میکنه کار بکنه سال چند سال بعد اونو دیدم که وکیل بود و در این موقع من انجامن همان تصور کودکان رو با کمک عده از دوستانم تحسیز کرده بودم و رئیس اون انجامن بودم. از نفسیم برای همکاری دعوت کردم آمد و در اونجا در زمینه بزهکاری اطفال و مخصوصا حمایت از کودکانی که در سنین کمتر از 18 سال مرتکب جور شده و مجازات اعدام گرفته بودند فعالیت میکرد. نسرین همیشه مخالف اعدام و مخصوصا اعدام مجرمین کمتر از 18 سال بود. نسرین رو آزاد کنید. نسرین و همه زندانیان سیاسی و عقیدتی در ایران بایستی آزاد بشوند. همراه ما باشید برای آزادی زندانیان سیاسی و عقیدتی در ایران. Dear Mrs. Sutude. The EU has raised concern for your difficult situation and called for your sentence to be reviewed. The EU believes you should be released from prison. No one should be in prison for standing up for human rights. The protection of human rights defenders must be ensured everywhere. Our position on the death penalty is consistent. And it's thus with great pleasure that I present the 2020 Right Livelihood Award to Nasrin Zutude. Thank you. As معرفی پرمهر خانم آن لینده وزیر محترم امور خارج سوئد بسیار سپاسگزارم. دوستان عزیز حضور در جمع خانواده رایت لایولیهود برای من افتخار بزرگی است. میخواهم در این فرصت از بنیاد برای بینش، عشق و دوستی که در کار شما تجلی می کند تشکر کنم. مفتخرم که در مراسمی شرکت می کنم که اکنون یک سنت گشته و انسانیت مشترک ما را تایید کرده و آن را غنی می کند. حقیقتا حضور پرمهر شما برایم تداعی سخن سعدی شاعر بزرگ قرن سیزده میلادی است سخنانی که به دیوارهای سازمان ملل زینت بخشیده و تجلی اعلامی جهانی حقوق بشر می باشد بنی آدم اعضای یکدیگرند که در آفرینش ز یک گوهرند چو عضوی به درد آورد روزگار دگر عضوها را نماند قرار در روزهای سخت اعتصاب غذا در زندان و افزایش فشارهای غذایی بر خانواده ام از طریق همسرم رضا خندان مطلع شدم که جایزه نوبل آلترناتیو به من و سه تن از فعالان مدنی از کشورهای دیگر تعلق گرفته است قطعا افتخار بزرگی بود که من یکی از برندگان این جایزه باشم و البته در آن شرایط سخت انرژی دوباره برای ادامه راه برای من و خانواده ام فراهم می کرد. 
در این حال در اکتبر سال جاری و همزمان با 25 امین سالگرد تصویب اعلامیه رفع کلیه اشکال تبعیض علیه زنان تلاش های زیادی در جهت همبستگی زنان دنیا در حمایت از این جانب به عمل آمد. از این بابت نیز من از حمایت های بیدریقی برخوردار بودم که جایگاه خاص خود را داشته است و بنیاد شما در ایجاد آن همبستگی به طور برجسته عمل کرده بود. تردید ندارم گشایش های قضایی که منجر به مرخصی درمانی این جانب گردید نتیجه همین همبستگی و دوستی عمیق بوده است. در طی سالهای حبسم که صرفا بابت انجام وظایف هرفهیم بوده است افکار عمومی و نهادهایی چون بنیاد شما حمایت های گسترده ای را از من به عمل آوردن. این حمایت های بی سابقی جهانی مرا از هر توضیحی به فرزندانم که از خورد سالی شاهد زندانی شدن مادرشان بوده اند بی نیاز می کند. من به عنوان کسی که همواره رویای شهروند بودن، برابر بودن و برخوردار از حق بودن را با خود حمل کرده است، به قدرت و امنیت شما به عنوان شهروندان جامعه دیگر قبطه می خورم. اما این را می دانم که جامعه شما نیز در مسیری پرپیچ و خم راه خود را به سوی دموکراسی گشوده است و به پاسداری هر روزه از دموکراسی پرداخته است که بسیار ارزشمند است. از این بابت جامعه مدنی ایران نیز به عنوان قسمتی از کره زمین که میخواهد این قسمت از جهان را با تکه بر ارزشهای مشترک بشریت قابل زیست کند طی سالهای طولانی و با مسالمت آمیز ترین قدم ها راه دشوار دستیابی به دموکراسی را میپیماید زیرا ایرانیان نیز مثل همه جای دنیا میخواهند با آرامش، ادالت و آزادی زندگی کنند و البته جامعه بکالت هم در این میان نقش خود را ایفا می نماید. ضمن این که من از افتخار پیوستن به کانون بسیاری از برندگان برجسته ای که این جایزه را دریافت کرده اند سپاس گذارم، مایلم توجه شما را به اوضاع و احوال همه زندانیان سیاسی در ایران جلب کرده و از شما بخواهم که با ما برای سلامتی و رهایی آنها هم صدا باشید. مراتب سپاس و قدردانی خود را به اوله فونوکسول مدیر محترم بنیاد رایت لایولی هود و اعضای محترم هیئت و منا و قضات عالی قدر تقدیم می دارم که و مراتب تبریک خود را خدمت سه برنده دیگر این جایزه لوتی کانینگ هامرین، برایان استیونسون و آلکس بیالیاتسکی اعلام می دارم. شک ندارم که این تلاش های مشترک در جهت ایجاد دنیایی بهتر تأثیر گذار می باشند. با تقدیم بهترین احترامات نسرین ستوده سوم دسامبر 2020 ایران تهران The sun to my face Rain on my shoulders A bullet in my gun Oh, I got eyes in the back of my head Just in case I have to What I can when I can while I can for my people While the clouds roll back and the stars fill the night That's when I'm gonna stand up Take my people with me Together we are going to a brand new home Far across the
Thank you so much, the mamas stand up. One thing about the Right Livelihood Award is that anyone can nominate. And after careful investigation by the foundation's research team, uh, an international juror will select the laureate. And one person who's a part of this team is the executive director of the foundation, Mr. Ole von Yxköl. Give him some applause. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely Thank having you, you here. Thanks. We're going to have a bit of a Q&A with you this uh, evening, some questions. Uh, as we learned, Nasreen Sotude was ordered back uh, to jail yesterday. Could you uh, share some of your thoughts around this? Yeah, that was really shocking for us. We learned about it yesterday. We were in touch with her husband yesterday who had to drive her back to the notorious Karchak prison. And we had been in touch with her over the last weeks and just days ago received this recording that we saw in the pictures that she took in her flat just days ago. But as she went back to prison yesterday, there was not a quiver in her voice. Do you know any more about her state of uh, like mind right now? Uh, her state of mind is incredibly calm. She's accepted this prize, but she is still um, should have medical treatment. So it's really wrong to send her back. And of course, the 
prison sentence was unjust mm -hmm. from the start. She should never have been sent to prison. Another person is wondering, what is your message to the Iranian regime? First of all, uh, Nazrin asked us to share the message uh, of calling for the release of Ahmad Reza Jalali, an Iranian Swedish citizen who is facing execution in Iran, and that's and you know, she's always thinking of the other political prisoners. But apart from that, obviously, we are calling, as Shirin Ebadi said, to free Nazrin, and everyone can share that on social media, and we will be working with our connection at the United Nations and with national governments to amplify that call. Uh, someone wants to know, what is the overall message of the award this year? What do the four laureates have in common? Well, as you see, there's a strong work for, for democracy, and that was really something we saw in the nominations we received from all around the world, these threats to democracy. And what is disappointing about the work of the Lords is that it's not just technical human rights work, it's really organizing, right? It's empowering others to stand up. And the message thus is, you know, there are so many people who work for democracy, who believe in democracy, if they all stand together, then that movement is much stronger than the authoritarians we see rising. Uh, someone wants to know, what can I do to support the laureate's work? Well, you can go to our, our website. You find 182 laureates there all around the world. You find the dozens of universities that we cooperate with. But I would say none of that is really necessary because the important thing is always to work for change where you are and with your talents because the change we need to see for a just, peaceful, sustainable world over the coming years is so so broad that everyone really needs to start working where they are. Uh, last question over here. What are your expectations for the coming decade? What trends do you see in your nominations? We see worrying trends in our nominations. Clearly, we see the climate crisis. We see the loss of biodiversity. We see the incredible injustice in this world. We see the risks for nuclear war. But then we also see the, the power of people to change that. You know, trends are just projections from the past. None of that is inevitable. The future is in our hands. But we need to use that power very urgently um, to bring about that change because this next decade really needs to be about change. And that is why we stress courage so much, the courage to take us from words to action. So for everyone, probably really the thing that you've been thinking someone ought to be doing for a better world might just be the thing you should be doing tomorrow. Thank you so much, Ole von Ixkul. I think that's, that deserves some applause, right? Very powerful. Our next presenter is a Swedish diplomat and former United Nations official throughout his four decades, including 20 years as the UN. He worked to promote human rights and protection of people, even when it meant going against his own organization. In 2014, he rang the bell on sexual abuse of children by international peacekeepers in the Central African Republic and the lack of response by the UN. As a result, the UN suspended him and started an uh, investigation against him. When the issue became public in the international media, the UN was forced to appoint an independent panel that found that the UN not only had failed its responsibility, but also abused its authority, clearing him of all accusations. Please welcome the very brave Anders Kompass. <laughs> Dear Alice and viewers around the world, the journey of human rights has been marked by impressive advances and heartbreaking setbacks. What is most encouraging, however, is the proof that men and women of goodwill can make a difference. Their imaginations, actions, decisions, sacrifices, and personal examples have helped to bolster the chances of reason 
and conscious against power and interest. Alice Bialyatsky is truly one of these brave individuals. His persistent and long-standing efforts at the helm of the Human Rights Center, Vyasna, to empower the people of Belarus and to ensure them their democratic rights have rendered them an unstoppable force for freedom. His work with Vyasna have laid the foundations of a peaceful and democratic society in Belarus. Alice Bielatsky is a human rights activist in Belarus, leading an almost 30-year campaign for democracy and freedom. In 1996, he founded the Human Rights Center, Vyazna, which today is the country's leading organization documenting human rights abuses and monitoring elections. Belarus, under the authoritarian rule of President Alexander Lukashenko, is often referred to as Europe's last dictatorship. Elections are rigged, opposition voices are silenced, and civil society is severely restricted. Bieletsky has been arrested more than 25 times and spent several years in prison on trumped-up charges as Belarusian authorities have tried to impede him. The government has also frequently targeted Vyazna and its members. However, Bielatsky and Vyazna's persistent and long-standing efforts to empower the people of Belarus and ensure their democratic rights have rendered them an unstoppable force for freedom. During the recent large-scale pro-democracy demonstrations, Vyazna has been playing a leading role in advocating for the freedom of assembly, defending the rights of people arrested for protesting, and documenting human rights abuses. Bielatsky and Vyazna continue to stand for the multitude of courageous people protesting Lukashenko's dictatorial reign at high personal risk. Through their commitment to democracy and freedom, Bielecki and Vyazna have laid the foundations of a peaceful and democratic society in Belarus. It is thus <clears throat> with great pleasure that I present the 2020 Right Livelihood Award to Alice Biadliatsky. Well, congratulations. Дорогие друзья, в этом году награда за правильный образ жизни присуждена правозащитному центру «Весна и мне». И это очень важный и волнующий момент в нашей жизни. Вручение этой награды, которую зачастую называют альтернативной Нобелевской премией, происходит в то время, когда в Беларуси идет мирная революция. Вот уже полгода белорусское общество ведет захватывающую борьбу – Борьбу за права человека, за демократию и справедливость. Борьбу за право называться народом, как говорил наш классик Янка Купала. Борьбу с последним диктатором Европы и его режимом, который он строил более 26 лет. Эта борьба не проходит без жертв. Четверо демонстрантов убиты, более 30 тысяч арестованных, более тысячи раненых, тысячи избитых и прошедших через пытки белорусов. Убийства, изнасилования и пытки – это все сейчас происходит в Беларуси. Беларусь – европейская страна, которая оказалась погружена в атмосферу государственного террора. Лукашенко сфальсифицировал выборы, он потерял легитимность в глазах белорусского народа. Его власть держится только на полиции и вооруженных силах. Мои коллеги из весны также подвергаются преследованиям за правозащитную деятельность». 
В 2020 году 18 моих друзей, а также наших волонтеров из весны попадали под аресты или произвольно задерживались. В октябре наша коллега Марина Костылянченко провела в тюрьме месяц. Третий месяц в тюрьме сидит координатор волонтеров весны Марфа Рабкова и наш волонтер Андрей Чупюк. Они попали туда только за то, что организовывали продуктовые передачи для политических заключенных в Минске. Эту благотворительную помощь власти расценили как преступление. Им грозит тюремное заключение в несколько лет. Правозащитному центру «Весна» постоянно поступают угрозы со стороны специального подразделения милиции. Несмотря на эти угрозы, мы продолжаем заниматься помощью репрессированным, мы продолжаем заниматься мониторингом и анализом ситуации с правами человека в стране, мы документируем случаи пыток и нечеловеческого обращения, мы распространяем правозащитную информацию. В это непростое для нас время высокопрестижная премия за правильный образ жизни является для нас, правозащитников весны, сильной моральной поддержкой. Награда свидетельствует о том, что то, что мы делаем уже 24 года ради установления справедливости в нашей стране, это правильно, нужно и необходимо. Мы расцениваем вручение этой премии не только как признание качества работы, мы воспринимаем ее как знак солидарности всего демократического мира с белорусским народом. И это ясный сигнал белорусским властям, сигнал о том, что мир никогда не будет мириться с массовыми нарушениями прав человека. Мир не примет того, что сейчас происходит в Беларуси. Если мы не хотим, чтобы Беларусь превратилась в один большой концентрационный лагерь, ГУЛАГ, нужно активно поддерживать белорусский народ сегодня и сейчас. Несмотря на сталинский фашистский террор в 30-е и 50-е годы 20-го столетия, несмотря на постсоветский лукашенковский авторитаризм последних 26 лет, вытравить естественное стремление белорусов к правам человека, к свободе и независимости невозможно. Последние месяцы нашей мирной революции показали это. Белорусский народ продолжает свою мирную борьбу. Мирное массовое сопротивление против насилия и несправедливости – это то, с чем у режима Лукашенко нет никаких шансов справиться. В этом 2020 году лауреатами премии «Лавли Худ» стали также моя дорогая Насрин Сатудех, перед мужеством и смелостью, которой я преклоняюсь, а также Лотти Каннингем Урен и Брайан Стивенсон. Все вместе мы сделаем все, чтобы наш мир стал хоть немного лучше. Дер Насрин is in a terrible situation now. I can imagine how it is for her to be in prison and even harder to go back. Sometimes I have dreams that I'm in prison again and those are my darkness dreams. My heart and thoughts are with Nasrin now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alice Bialyatsky. That was all the laureates we had this evening. Uh, this has been super emotional and powerful, knowing that there are people all around the planet fighting for human rights. It's not only moving, it's inspiring. No matter where you are in the world or who you are, our laureates have shown us that taking action makes a difference. Courage, boldness, standing up for what is right is more important than ever. And it could not only change the course of history, but you know, millions of lives all around the planet, you guys are needed to stand up for what is right. Please be inspired from the laureates this evening. My name is Gina Duravi. It has been an honor and a pleasure being your host tonight. I want to thank all of the artists, the presenters, all of you guys watching from all around the planet and the laureates. Once again, thank you for your service. We're going to end this amazing night with Amanda Bayman. A change is going to come. I was born by the river In a little tent Oh, and just like that river I've been running ever since It's been a long time A long time coming 
But I know a change has got to come. Oh, yes, it is. It's been too hard living, and I'm afraid to die. Oh, I don't know what's up there. It's been a long time, a long time coming, but I know change is gonna come. Change is gonna come.